In this training video, we're going to look at the use of cell referencing informally. So what we're trying to do in column E, starting on E2, is trying to find out what each of the regions are for the sales as a percentage of the total sales. So we're trying to find out what north sales are as a percentage of total sales, east sales against total, northwest against total, so on, so on, so on. So every one is going to be looked at against the total of sales. So if we look at how Excel works with the formula, so we will start on an equal sign. It's going to be B2 divided by B8. And these have been formatted as a percentage. But the idea behind the formula is to copy them. We don't want to do this one at a time, because we could do it one at a time and just repeat the process. But that's going to take a long time. And if you've got the hundreds of these to do, it doesn't make sense doing one at a time. So you want to copy this down. And when we copy it down, okay, we get lots of error messages. So div zero means divide by zero. So what's happening is as we come, as we copy down one cell, it's looking at the east region but then Excel is moving away from the total because it's keeping the formula pattern reset. So we've set the formula pattern for the first formula, B2 against B8, divided by B8. Well, the next one should be B3 against B8. Next one, B4 against B8. And then it repeats the pattern, B5 against B8, B6, B7 against B8, and then B8 against B8 for 100%. Now the computer in Excel and the, the, calcula the calculator behind Excel doesn't know to hold B8 in place. It just copies a pattern. So all it's doing now is saying, okay, B2 divided by B8. If it moves one down, that means it's got to be B3 by B9. If it moves two, now, two down, it's B4 by B10. So it's just moving according to the pattern we originally set. So we could correct this by going through all these div zeros and just going back and saying, well, I don't want it against B9, which is the zero here. I want it to go against B8. So we could now manually change all these back to B8. I've worked with companies in the past that have actually done this. So, and I've done this for hundreds of rows. So you can see how, how long this might take and the risk of error. So I'll just do a couple more. You can see what I'm doing. I'm just going back against B8 all the time, which is the total. And the final one, B8. Okay, so we know that by copying it down, Excel doesn't automatically give us the right answers. We know we can correct it, but correcting is okay for a couple of rows like I've done in this example. If that was 2,000 rows, that would not be appropriate and it would lead to error and frustration. So we need Excel to help us and be a bit more helpful to us in copying these kind of formulas down. So I'm going to delete all the corrections I've made. I'm going to go to the 10.64%. Look at the formula and think, which part of that formula do I need to hold in place and do I need to lock? Well, I need the B2 to move down to B3, B4, B5, B6, B7, and B8. So I needed to cycle down column B from B2 to B8. But the B8 which is the divisor part of the formula, I don't want that to move away from B8 because that is the total. So we can hold this in place by using dollar signs. Now, if you type in a dollar sign normally, so I'll just escape this for, for a second and I'll go into a different cell. If I type in a dollar sign and type in one, two, three, a dollar sign with standard typing means currency. But dollar signs in formulas do not mean currency. They've got a different meaning. And I'll explain that now. So if I go back to the calculation, I want to put dollars around the B and the B8. So I'm going to click before the B, and I'm going to press a key. That's F4. Now F4 works on all desktop computers, on the majority of laptop computers, but there's some laptop computers you've got to press function F4 to get dollar signs. I'd advise you get used to the F4 key. It's a much better way of learning dollar signs instead of putting them in yourself. So one press of the F4 
gives you, in effect, a dollar before the B and a dollar before the eight. Now, dollars inside of a formula, we know we're inside the formula because we've got equals. So any dollars inside of the formula, they're like keys. They're locking something shut. So the dollar before the B locks the B shut. The B is a column. The dollar before the eight locks the eight shut. The eight's a, a row. So if you lock a column on a row, you're locking a cell. So the first press of the F4 is known as absolute cell referencing. Dollar, dollar. It locks the actual cell. If I press F4 again, the referencing moves. This is called relative cell referencing. So the B now is unlocked. It can move to C, D. It can move across. But the 8 cannot move from row 8 because it's got a, a key in place. And the dollar is before the 8. If I press F4 again, the dollar is now before the B. So the B can't move. But the 8 can go 9, 10, 11. So it's got no key against it. Press F4 again. It gets rid of all your dollar signs. So the F4 cycles through all your dollar signs. In our example, we want to hold the cell in place. Because we want to hold the cell B8 in place so it doesn't move. So it's a dollar, dollar. Press Enter. Copy down. And I can always get the format in back by using the format painter quickly. And then... Just changing the currency to a percentage. So you can quickly get formatting back if you ever need to. And I can put it to two places if I want to. And there we go. So now we can see that every formula is divided by E8 B8 because it's held itself in place. So you can see B8 is held at 100%. It's B8 divided by B8 gives you 100%. So in this video, we've looked at the use of cell referencing and to get the right answer for the formula we wanted here we have to use what's called absolute cell referencing and absolute cell referencing is dollar dollar and it holds a cell in place so that's what we've done in this example but this completes the training video for the introduction of cell referencing and this example looking at the f4 key and the different choices we got plus we covered absolute cell referencing if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. Hope to see you for the next tutorial and thanks for watching.